Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prop Omar. Today we're going to talk about an interesting phenomenon that happens with modular arithmetic that allows us to compute really large powers of numbers modulo a given integer in many situations. So the motivation here is, say you're given an integer a and another integer n greater than or equal to 2. Is there a power that you can raise a to to get 1 modulo n? And we saw in previous videos on this discrete math playlist that that kind of computation is really helpful. Right, so in other words, can we fill in this blank right over here? Okay, so let's look at some examples just to get a sense of what's going on. So say we take n to be 5 and a to be 2. Let's see if we can fill in this blank. Um, so 2 to the 1 is congruent to 2 mod 5. That doesn't work. Uh, 2 squared is 4. 2 cubed is 8, uh, which is congruent to 3 mod 5. Um, but luckily, 2 to the 4th works. 2 to the 4th is congruent to 16, which is congruent to 1 modulo 5. Okay, so this is our number here that works in our box. Okay, um, let's try again with a different number. Uh, let's keep n to be 5 and keep uh, make a 2. Let's actually test the same power, 3 to the 4th. What happens with that? So 3 to the 4th is 81. And hey, 81 is congruent to 1 mod 5. So we're starting to see an interesting phenomenon already that it seems like there might be a uniform power that works. We don't know for sure, but um, we can actually test 4 to the 4. 4 to the 4 is 256, which um, is 1 mod 5 as well, because 255 divides 5. Huh, interesting. So if we work mod 5, we do get a uniform power. Okay, um, so let's make some other observations. Um, so let's say we picked n to be something like the number 8, and a to be 4. Or maybe I'll pick a to be 6, actually, that'll illuminate um, something interesting. Okay, so if we're trying to fill in the box and we're trying to find an exponent, let's call it e. So that 6 to the e is congruent to 1 mod 8. If we could find such an e, then it would mean that 8 divides 6 to the e minus 1. But there's a problem with this. Right, six and, two, 6 and 8 have a greatest common divisor of 2. Okay, the issue with that then is that 2 would have to divide this entire thing if 8 divided it. All right, but 2 already divides 6 to the e. So if it divides 6 to the e minus 1, Taking the difference of these, that would imply 2 divides 1, which is not possible. So this is impossible in this case. So in general, what this means is, for there even to be a way to fill in this box, we're going to need that the GCD of A and N is 1. So it's required for this box to even exist. And the argument is exactly the same as the argument that we made with n being 8 and a being 6. Okay, so what happens if it's the case that a and n have a greatest common divisor of 1? Can we always guarantee that there's a box? That's the focus of today's video, and the answer is that there always is something that you can fill in in the box. So given an integer n greater than or equal to 2, and a an integer whose GCD with a is 1, that was the criterion that we mentioned just earlier that you need, the box that you can fill in is this special number called phi of n. And if you take a and raise it to the phi of n, you will definitely get 1 mod n. Phi of n is the number of integers in the set 1 through n whose GCD with n is 1. So it's all the numbers between 1 and n, it's the number of integers from 1 through n, that have no common factors with n. Okay, so let's look at some examples before we even try to argue why it's the case that 
A raised to this mysterious power is congruent to 1 mod n. I should mention that this proof is going to be quite similar to a proof in a different video where we prove a special case of this called Fermat's Little Theorem, and um, we'll state that in a little bit. This theorem here is called Euler's Theorem. Okay, so some examples. Let's go back to when n is 5. So when n is 5, um, if the GCD of a and 5 is 1, this statement in the theorem is saying that a to the phi of 5 is congruent to 1 mod 5. Okay, so what is phi of 5? Phi of 5 is the number of integers in the set 1 through 5 with no common factor with 5. Okay, those numbers are 1, 2, 3, and 4. Because 5 is prime, all the numbers less than 5 are going to have no common factors with 5. So the number of these is 4. And so that tells us that a to the 4 is congruent to 1 mod 5, regardless of what a is, as long as it's not a multiple of 5. And we saw that happen earlier. That's exactly the phenomenon we saw in our observations above. That's pretty cool. Okay, and we can see then that this actually generalizes. Um, if n is prime, then phi of n is going to be n minus 1. The reason is because n is prime, so all the integers between 1 and n, none of them have a common factor with n, it's except for n itself, which is a common factor of n. Now, when I say common factor, I mean a common factor that's not 1. We're looking at the things that have GCD 1 with um, n. Okay, so maybe even I will state, just to be careful of the fact that 1 is a factor, um, the number of integers is 1 through n with um, whose GCD is 1 with n, with n is 1, sorry. Okay, so if n is prime, 5n is 1. So for any integer a, so the numbers that we can use here for a are things that have a GCD of 1 with n, but n is prime. So if you have a GCD of 1 with n, then you must be a number that's not a multiple of n. So we can state this as for any a in the integers with n not dividing a, a to the n minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod n. Okay. So this is a special case of our theorem when n is prime, and this is typically called Fermat's Little Theorem. Okay, so this gives us a sense of the type of thing that's going on right over here. Um, let's just do one more example to get a sense of what's happening. Let's take n to be uh, 10. Okay, so the numbers uh, in the list between 1 and 10 are these numbers right over here, and let's circle the ones that have a GCD of 1 with 10. So the factors of 10 are 2 and 5. So the numbers that have a GCD of 1 with the number 10 are the numbers that don't have a factor of 2 or 5 in them. So that's 1, 3, 7, and 9. And so phi of 4, or phi of 10, is 4. And so that implies things like um, 1 to the 4, and 3 to the 4, and 7 to the 4, and 9 to the 4 are all congruent to 1 mod 10. Okay, cool. And you can see how something like this is useful, right? Because as soon as we have a power of a number that's 1 mod 10, or 1 mod n in general, we can raise to a lot higher powers um, and reduce things a lot like we saw in previous videos. Okay, so the remainder of this video is going to argue why this thing actually is the case. That if you have an integer n, or an integer a, um, whose GCD with 1 is, if n is 1, then you can raise a to this power to get 1 mod n. Okay, so it's going to start with the following idea. So list 
the integers in the set 1 through n whose GCD with n is 1. There are phi of n many of them, so we can label them as follows. We'll label them as a sub 1, a sub 2, up to a sub phi of n, because that's the number of them in the list. Now, because these numbers are all between 1 and n, they're not congruent to each other mod n. They're all different mod n. So what we're going to do is consider multiplying all of these by our special a right over here. We're going to look at these, but reduce them modulo n to a number between one, uh, 0 and n minus 1, and reduce each to a number in the set uh, 1, 2, up to n minus 1, modulo n. None of these are going to be a multiple of n because both a and all of the ai's are uh, relatively prime, meaning they have GCD of 1 with n, so we're good on that front. Okay, so um, we're going to make a few observations. So the first observation is I claim each of these numbers in this new set where we multiply by a are all different modulo n. So suppose a times a sub i is congruent to a times a sub j mod n. Let's look at what this would mean. This would imply that n divides the difference. A, A, I minus A, A, J. Or in other words, N divides A times A, I minus A, J. Okay, um, but the GCD of N and A is 1. So if N divides this product, it's going to divide only um, the other piece of the product that doesn't involve A. So n divides a i minus a j. Okay, but a i and a j are numbers between 1 and n. The only possibility is that they're actually the same. Okay, so what we showed is if these two are congruent mod n, then a i and a j are actually exactly the same number. So if a i is not equal to aj, then uh, a ai is not equal to a aj. Or in other words, all of these numbers are different, mod n. Okay, good. So now that we have it stated that all of these are different, I'm going to erase this and we're going to come back to see uh, more of why we actually get this phenomenon that we saw right over here. Okay, so we have a list of numbers here. There's phi of n of them. They're all different, and every single one of them has no common factor with n. So this thing has to be modulo n, the complete list of numbers that are GCD1 with n. Meaning, this list here is a rearrangement of this list that we created that's new when taken mod n. Okay, so I want to make this a little bit concrete because it seems a little abstract. So let's take an actual number and see how this plays out. So for example, let's say n was um, 3, or maybe let's like make n 5, um, and a was the number uh, 3. Okay, so the numbers in this list here are the numbers that have no common, uh, who have GCD of one with five. So they're the numbers one, two, three, four. So let's list those. Okay, so um, when we multiply by A, we get three, six, nine, and 12. And then our uh, instructions were to reduce each of these modulo uh, five. So we get one, uh, 3, 1, 4, and 2. So you notice this is a complete rearrangement of the original list. right? And the reason was because, so we did the multiplication, all of these are still 
GCD1 with the number n, in this case, the number 5. And then none of these are congruent to each other. So when we reduce this list, we get the complete list of numbers that are have GCD of 1 with 5. And they're all different. So we get our original list rearranged. OK, so let's actually use that then. And the key um, way to use that is, since the lists are the same, the products in the list taking module n are the same. So switch back to the black color. Um, a5 or a a1, a a2 up to a a5 of n is actually congruent to a1 a2 up to a n or a5 n mod n. Okay, and the reason is these lists that we're taking products of are the exact same list of numbers when taking modulo n. Now here we have a factor of a to the phi of n because there's phi of n copies of a. We have one for every product n there. So we have a to the phi of n times a1, a2, all the way to a5 of n is congruent to a1, a2, up to a5 of n modulo n. And I'm going to put like a 1 here just to emphasize what we're going to do next. If we take the difference, then this means that n divides the difference, which has a common factor of a1, a2 up to a5 n. And then the other factor is a to the phi of n minus 1, which is looking a lot like something we might need in the actual theorem. Right, and then the key now is that the GCD of n with the product of these phi of a's, or a, sorry, the product of the ai's is actually one. And the reason is because all of the ai's have no common factors with n except for one. That means n divides this thing right over here. And if n divides this thing right over here, that's the same as saying, that a to the 5n is congruent to 1 mod n. Cool. Now, this is really great because, like we mentioned earlier in the video, this allows us to compute powers quickly. Like, for example, if you wanted to know what 7 to the 471 is, modulo 10, you could write this as uh, 7 to four times some power times seven to some power between zero and three. Um, this is more manageable to compute, but then this here is going to be seven to the four to a power, which we can make one because seven to the four is one. And we don't have to do much computation to know that seven to the four is one. We can appeal to this theorem. Another sort of thing that we need to know is how to actually compute um, phi of n in general. And all the examples we've seen, we actually just explicitly figured out what it is. We at least know what to do when n is prime. And we'll see in a future video how to get an explicit formula for what phi of n is. Great, so I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, definitely click the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, definitely subscribe to the channel.